Today, we're gonna talk about an event that could cause potentially the worst headache of someone's life. What's up guys? Welcome back to Patho and Chill. Yes, today we're gonna be talking about an aneurysm. So the moment you reach 50 years old, your likelihood of developing an aneurysm severely increases by about like 3%. And it's often seen along with coronary artery disease. So what's the etiology of an aneurysm? How can it really happen? And there's three main like reasons that can pinpoint to the formation of an aneurysm. So the number one potential cause of an aneurysm is what is known as atherosclerosis. Now, we already did a video on this earlier before, so if you haven't checked it out, make sure you go check out the link right up there on arteriosclerosis that can potentially cause atherosclerosis. The number two potential etiology factor for an aneurysm is Marfan syndrome. So Marfan syndrome is a collagen disease that basically weakens and makes the collagen within your body in the extracellular, in the extracellular matrix uh, very weak. And so this makes sense how it could cause an aneurysm because the basically you have your endothelial wall lining on a blood vessel and that extracellular matrix partly made up of collagen is very weak uh, kind of explaining why it's very likely for it to become dilated um, and then thus uh, prone to rupture. And then lastly, uh, family history is a huge etiology. So if you are predisposed via any genetics, um, if your mother your your father had it, then there is a greater potential for you to develop an aneurysm. Now, aneurysms are normally asymptomatic until they're not. And so that is basically when we get to potential outcomes of it. And so outcomes can be a catastrophic rupture and it's most commonly seen in the brain known as a berry aneurysm. And so like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, if an aneurysm ruptures in your brain, then you're likely to experience the absolute worst headache of your life. And this is often seen with nausea and vomiting. Uh, your, your neck may become pretty stiff as the aneurysm is actually rupturing. Uh, you may have to, you may start seeing like double vision. Obviously all this blood pooling in your brain is compressing on things, which is what could potentially lead to that double vision. Additional symptoms may be sensitivity to light, seizure, uh, a drooping eyelid, and there are actually various others. I mean, confusion, there's many different other types of symptoms, but those are the main ones that uh, an individual can experience if the aneurysm ruptures. So it is just important to keep in mind that this potential rupture of blood can compress a lot of tissues, and that is what exactly is leading to these various symptoms that I've been uh, kind of talking about. One final outcome of this is that it can lead to a potential embolization of an atherosclerotic plaque. And so, because we've already explained how atherosclerosis can be a potential etiologic factor for an aneurysm, well, if it does rupture, that means that basically everything that was in that blood vessel is just kind of exploding, right? And so if you had any plaque, any cholesterol built up plaque in that vessel, then now this plaque is free to travel wherever. And so it can basically become an emboli and continue on. And then think about it, you can go from an aneurysm to now a stroke. So basically it can be just a whole bunch of mess, but it can be managed. And so basically if one starts to develop an aneurysm, most doctors will just try to monitor it, um, you know, see its progression, see if maybe it regresses. However, if not, then there is a potential for surgical correction in which a stent or a graft can be placed in that artery with the main goal of reducing blood flow to that specific artery and uh, basically by reducing the blood flow you're reducing the pressure that is building up in that artery and reducing the potential for the artery to burst. So basically if you are already of greater age and you start to experience some sort of dizziness, lightheadedness and frequent headaches then it could be a potential for you to go to the doctor and just go check out to make sure you don't have a potential aneurysm. Additional risk factors to developing an aneurysm can come once again from smoking. I've always talked about how bad smoking is to your actual health. Um, high blood pressure and that constant pressure being placed on the arterial wall is gonna start weakening it over time and thus make it more likely to dilate and create this aneurysm over time. Lastly, drug abuse and heavy alcohol consumption have been also noted as potential risk factors for developing an aneurysm. With that being said, that is all I have for you guys today. Make sure you go check out my other videos. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button down below. Subscribe for more content here at Patho and Chill. And for now, I'll see you guys later. Peace out.